Here we go. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Big Idea. I'm your host, Dr. Jeffrey Hanna, here at Clear Chiropractic, where we talk about some of the really important elements about health that, unfortunately, a lot of times are not explained to people, in particular, the relationship about how it is that the upper part of your neck affects your overall well-being. And today, this is a video that is very timely, I have to say, in the regard that I have spoken with four people in the last week about this particular video. I've had a few resources all come together all at once. And these are conversations I've had with people for a, you know, a long period of time. But super important. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the TMJ. And I'm going to be talking about it, curiously enough, not from the upper cervical chiropractic perspective. I'm going to be talking about it more in terms of the dental side of the equation to let you know what is most likely going on. So there is a huge amount of overlap when we're talking about TMJ-related disorders. A lot of times people say, oh, I've got a TMJ. Well, the TMJ is a joint. What's the problem? Do you have compression? Do you have stretching? Do you have excessive mobility? Do you have abnormal mobility? Do you have clenching? Do you have grinding? Is it causing you pain? Is it causing you balance problems? Is it calling, causing anxiousness? Is it causing posture problems? Is it causing autonomic problems? It can show up a lot of different ways. And there's a huge amount of overlap between your TMJ and between your upper neck. In fact, you can see that the difference is all of a, a couple of centimeters, less than an inch. And a lot of times when people say, oh, I've got pain in my jaw, well, where is it? And they end up pointing here. Or they say, oh, something hurts in my neck. And then they end up pointing right here. They point and say, I have ear pain. And they're actually pointing at their jaw. So one affects the other, first and foremost. And I oftentimes use the analogy, let's say that you've got, sorry, two rotten little kids. Each one is a little brat. But you get the two of them together. And you're talking about a whirlwind kind of issue. So the health of your jaw, the structural issue that can exist of your TMJ affects the function alignment of your neck. And the alignment of your neck has a profound impact in terms of how your jaw is going to be able to move. And so I'm going to share with you first and foremost a, a case that was um, brought to me of a gentleman who is experiencing in brief um, suboccipital pain, so pain across the back of his head up into the temple bones, was experiencing tinnitus almost with the basically with the heartbeat, what sometimes is known as a pulsile tinnitus. So, kind of sound like that. Bouts of dizziness, bouts of vertigo, and also having TMJ pain and also having a lot of uh, anxiousness issues. And Per usual, they've been to, you know, all the usual suspects, and we'll be showing you some of this person's MRIs, which from a pathological standpoint, we had a good look at them. There's no sign of pathology. Awesome. But even on his MRI, I can see that there are a few things that are not right. And in fact, I've been doing this work long enough that you can look at a person's TMJ, you can look at the shape of their face, and you know if there is a problem, yes or no. So what I'm going to do, let's jump into it. Let's have a look at a, a few pictures and let's highlight a few things. All right. Now, where we're actually going to start, it, we're going to start with this research paper right here. Internal derangement of the temporomandibular joint diagnosis and management written by, I'm sure I'm going to destroy these gentlemen's names, Dr. Tatley and Dr. McCon. And what I'm going to be referencing here, and I'm not going to read this article as I oftentimes have in the, the past here, but in brief is just a, a little bit of a, an overview. They talk about how a lot of TMJ or jaw-related issues are going to be defined with basically problems with abnormal disc position. So it's a little bit of very important anatomy. Inside of your jaw, there is a tiny piece of cartilage 
not unlike the cartilage in your knee. And what it's designed to do is it's designed to be able to shift and move like that in order to facilitate normal motion as you open and close your jaw. And if for any reason that disc is not sitting where it is supposed to, that can start causing a whole bunch of different problems. And so what I'm going to be highlighting for you here in particular is going to be this illustration here that we're going to blow up nice and big for you. Okay, so here we go. As we said, when you are opening and closing your mouth, this disc is actually supposed to move. And what you're looking at here represents the normal joint space. So this would actually be towards the front of your, your jaw, and then this is going to be towards the back. And so this little black thing you see right here, this is that little piece of the disc. And then these are connective um, or pieces or slips of connective tissue that normally attach onto the muscles. And so what we've got essentially is we've got this joint. So the bottom part of the jaw sitting in the little socket right here. And as you open and close your mouth, what happens is that is designed essentially to be able to slide and glide smooth and easy like this. So it's gonna glide on the disc forward into this particular position right here. And then you close your mouth and it's gonna come back into this position right here. And they've done a, a beautiful job, I have to say, which is why I wanna you know showcase this hand-drawn picture. They're doing it way better than I ever could. Have a look to see, first and foremost, how much broad space. There is all the way in between where the, the bony eminence would be located right through here and then where it would be meeting the top part of the jaw so that there's ample room for that disc all the way around. The second thing that I want to draw your attention to is going to be this part, so that rounded front part of the bone right here, okay? What I'm showcasing for you is that when things are done in a closed mouth position, that round part right there, which is called the condyle of the mandible, basically sits right across from the bump here. In other words, it doesn't actually sit all the way up on the roof right here. And that's going to be super important with some stuff I'm going to be showing you in just a little bit. Now, what they are illustrating in these particular pictures right here is what occurs if you have a essentially a dislocation of the disc. For whatever reason, that disc basically shifts outside of its normal alignment or what's called its centric position. And what that then means is it means that as your jaw is moving, it's not going to be able to move near as smooth as it would have been able to under the, the normal circumstances. And this is one of the reasons why if a person is, you know, opening their mouth, it can start to pop in that joint. You're not dislocating your jaw. Trust me, if you're dislocating your jaw, you are in so much pain in that moment and you are not able to close it, it is unbelievable. So the clicking, as you would be opening and closing your mouth, that's usually where the disc is actually moving a little bit too much like this. And oftentimes, the sign that is clicking or moving too much is actually a compensation for the opposite side. Why is that? It's because your jaw is essentially its one bone. And so if you've got the, the basically the front part here and then the two condyles that we're talking about here, so you can appreciate that movement as you're opening and closing your mouth, that if one of them has actually shifted too far backwards, the other one is going to be shifting a little bit more forward. And that typically is the side where you're going to have this too far forward or anterior disc derangement phenomenon that's going on. Now, if it's ever severe enough, again, to the point of dislocation, a person, you know, might need jaw surgery in order to correct that. But fortunately, the vast majority of cases like that, they can be conserved or they can be managed quite conservatively, either through precision-based chiropractic. 
through the right kind of dentistry, through physical therapy, through massage. So it can be done naturally. I want to say that first and foremost, and this of course is not diagnosing anybody over the interwebs, but most of the time TMJ issues can be managed conservatively. The question is, what's the reason for that issue to be going on? So I'm actually going to show you something here that highlights why this actually hits pretty close to home for me. So I'm going to show you this. That is very recently installed. So recently, honestly, it hasn't even been three hours where I've had these braces on the bottom of my teeth. And I'm going to draw your attention to something else. Those are not my teeth in the back. Those are what are called bite guides. They are little bits that are designed to build up and accommodate to the position and the alignment of my jaw. Why would you do something like that? Well, I was born with forceps, and so we had a trauma from day dot, and it changed and caused a shift in the structure and the orientation of my cranial bones, which would include my jaw. And so what happens is that this is my good side and this is essentially my squish side, including my TMJ right there. And I had had braces many, many years ago to try to give me the perfectly straight orthopedic smile. But unfortunately, what happens is that crosses fascial planes. It started to cause my jaw to drift like that and started causing huge amounts of compression right through my jaw. No amount of chiropractic adjusting, unfortunately, was resolving that. And so we had to go down the dental route. And it's taken a very, very long period of time to discover what the kind of dentistry that's necessary to help balance that out for me is going to be. So we had done some work to find where's the happy position for your jaw. Because as I'm going to show you in just a moment, I was experiencing basically the exact kind of problem, but to a lesser degree that I'm going to be highlighting through the, the rest of the, the video. So what I'm speaking of here is not just, again, as the upper cervical chiropractor, but something that I have personally experienced and that I understand, you know, when is it you need A, but when is it you need B? So we're going to be talking about then two different kinds of general conditions that can affect your TMJ alignment and your orientation. And we're going to be talking about, first and foremost, a myofunctional disorder. And then the second one we're going to refer to is, is a structural disorder. So what's the difference? A myofunctional disorder, this is where the problem of the TMJ, like we talked about where it can shift like this, is because there is a neuromuscular imbalance. Something is affecting the way that your lower jaw is designed to move. And a consequence of that then is it starts to cause TMJ pain, pressure, things like that. Now, what that most commonly looks like is if you're looking straight in the mirror or you're looking at your phone or whatever that would be, you look at how your mouth opens. So it should normally be going in a straight line. But if you see it go zigzag, so I'll over-exaggerate like that one way and then the other. That's where oftentimes there's a neuromuscular imbalance and the nerves that control the muscles that influence your jaw, they actually come out of the upper part of your neck. So if you've got that kind of a zigzag movement, that is actually textbook where what there actually is, is there's a misalignment in the upper part of your neck. It's affecting your neurology, which is affecting your muscle function, and that's contributing to the TMJ issue. You need to see a chiropractor. Now, the flip here is if you have where your jaw, when you open it, goes straight sideways like this, over-exaggerated. Straight sideways, like that. What that is, is that is a structural issue. It's with your upper palate and the way that the teeth come together. That has produced some kind of a shift. Your jaw is trying to compensate, and that is what is driving it. And in that kind of a circumstance, us as chiropractors or anybody who's working with the jaw, what we're working on is we're working on a compensation. In other words, yes, we can help, but it's not going to offer a permanent solution. What you need to do then is you need to see the right kind of dentist, whether they be a neuromuscular dentist or an orthodontist who understands these relationships 
And it's not just going to try to give you the perfectly straight, orthopedically straight smile, but it's actually going to say, okay, what is your normal architecture, your normal anatomy, so that we're actually going to be able to release it for what is normal for you. Otherwise, you end up like me at 40 years of age, having to have braces again to resolve some issues that were not resolved when I had them the first time when I was 20. But we live and learn. Nobody would ever set somebody up for these things if we knew about that. So we learn is the, the short of it through our own experiences. Now, wouldn't it be nice if it was either an either or kind of scenario? Yes. However, a great many people, they've got both. When you open your mouth, it goes zig and then kind of comes back a little bit, but not all the way. So it starts and then comes back a bit, but not all the way. So what that means is it means that is where you are going to need combination. You're going to need to work with the upper cervical chiropractor. You're going to need to work with the neuromuscular dentist. And you're probably also going to need to work with myofunctional therapists. These are people who work with the, the muscles of the jaw in order to ultimately find where is the, the happy position going to be. So I wanted to share that with everybody out there so that you know I'm not just you know talking about this from the, the doctor perspective again. I understand this as the doctor, but I also understand what it's like being on the patient side. And push comes to shove, I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is when it comes to this, quite literally is the short of it. So let's get back and have a look then in terms of some of the subtleties that you can look for to know what kind of a TMJ issue might actually be going on and what you need to do about it. Okay, so what I have done ever so quickly is I have returned to our original MRI in the, the research paper right through here. So this bumpity bit that you see right here, that represents that condyle, so the part of the lower jaw. This is the upper part of the jaw located right here. And in this particular case, this is forward facing on this side and so forth. So what this is showing is this is showing this person's jaw in a closed position and this is showing it open. So you'll notice that that position, you know, of the jaw moves. Good. It's supposed to. But what they're pointing the arrows to, the little black thing, that is that little slip of tissue. That's the cartilage. That's the disc. And in the normal circumstance, what I want to point out for you, again, is that that edge of the condyle should actually be sitting here. And the disc should be sitting here. So this is a, a true case where the jaw has gone way too far back and where the, the disc has come way, way, way too far forwards, even in the, the closed position. So this, again, is the, you know, theoretical side of it, but I want to show you what this actually looks like and how this characteristically manifests then when looking at a real person. Okay, so what I've got for you here, this is the MRI of that person who, again, I was asked to, to consult with. And what I'm going to, you know, showcase, there's a few, you know, really, really important things. First and foremost, I had a look at the, the brain to see if there were signs of compression, blood flow issues, um, all that sort of stuff, and really didn't find anything like that whatsoever. But there were two things that stood out to me right away. The first one is if you see this black shadow right here, that is approximately two to three times smaller than it should be. What that black shadow is, is that's this person's airway. So I can look at this right off the bat and have a very, very strong suspicion. It's like, okay, this person is not sleeping well. They might have sleep apnea. They might snore. They might have dark circles under their eyes, lots of things there. And the reason for it is if you look at the outline of this person's face, I'm looking at the orientation of their jaw and it's actually, it's being blocked by my little logo right there. So let me actually take this and I'm going to slide it up just a wee bit. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it. There we go. This way. Slide that right there. Okay. So you can see now this is where the person's jaw is relative to their upper lip. In other words, they're essentially 
like this. Or if I was to grossly over-exaggerate, this oftentimes will manifest as an overbite. One way or another, imagine if you would, in this person, their jaw shoved back like this. Try breathing. If you try to do something like that, you're going to find it's quite very difficult. And what will happen when your jaw is basically being oriented or shoved too far back, either because of abnormal tooth and jaw development, so you had a physical injury or something like that when you are a little kid, you know, off of a skateboard, off of a bike, something along those lines there. I'll just make this the normal size here again as we're going to go through a few things. Here we go. Then what it means is it means that you could be setting yourself up essentially where your jaw, even if you're not dislocating it or anything like that, but the jaw, instead of it sitting in that normal central position, gets shoved too far to the back. And what that's going to do is that's going to start to compress the snot out of that cartilage in there. And that bit of cartilage actually has the exact same kinds of sensory nerve receptors as the joints in your upper neck. Pain receptors, proprioceptors or posturoreceptors, if you want to think about that, that influence muscle tension and also pressure receptors. Pressure receptors go to the parts of the brain that are responsible for balance, equilibrium, and they also overlap tremendously with what are called your sympathetics. Sympathetics regulate blood flow, not just to that one local area, but everywhere within your brain. And if altered, can cause a person to experience autonomic kinds of conditions. They can experience anxiety, or at least for a better, you know, a better description, angst. A tremendous sense of internal, I feel jittery, but I don't know why. Like you've had five straight shots of coffee. I've seen it time and time again that the jaw is a major player in that. Same with tinnitus. If you've got compression of those same nerve sensors, those pressure receptors, if they get translated in your brain abnormally, that can produce that exact same symptom. The question then, as we said, is why, oh, why does a person have this kind of a TMJ issue? Because as I said, it can be because you've got that neuromuscular issue. That's the chiropractor. You can also have the structural issue, that's the dentist. Or it can be both, where you're essentially parallel parked in like this on either side. You can't get out in just one quick and easy move. It's going to take a, a little bit. So in this particular case, this was a, a gentleman who presented to the upper cervical chiropractor, but he was finding he just was not quite getting the results that we know and that we would expect. So I have a quick look there. It's like, no, his jaw is shoved way too far back. And I can see that based on his airway. And I can see that also based on the orientation of his jaw. But I want to dive one step deeper than that. And it's not the easiest thing to see on these MRIs. But what I'm doing is I'm zooming out to the left side right here. And this is kind of a, a tricky thing because the jaws, they are oriented at slight oblique angles. And what that means is that if we're looking at it from straight sideways views on MRIs, we don't always see it. Nevertheless, what I want to point out for you right here. So this represents this gentleman's lower jaw right here. And this represents where the upper part of the jaw should be. It follows this outline like that. And this little black thing right through here, that's the disc. So what's happening is his lower jaw is effectively smushed all the way up in there. MRIs are done with the mouth closed. So if that's where it is normal, at best when he opens, it's only going to pivot maybe about this much. And that's something I see very, very commonly. In fact, I was doing uh, two assessments for two people just in the last few days where I'm lightly palpating the joints of their neck firstly because they're experiencing some neck pain and things like that, headaches, and all the joints of their neck are moving properly. So what I do is I come in and check their jaw. Their jaw is also moving properly, but I can feel that there is not near enough space. 
And sure enough, in both of those cases, there was either A, a past facial trauma, or B, there was a history of having dental work that effectively caused that jaw to get shoved backwards. And so if I was to actually scroll over to the other side of this person's jaw, let's see if I can find it here, we're seeing essentially the exact same thing. This here is the outline, the upper part right here, and then here is the lower. So you might be able to make out there's this little black thing right here. That would represent that front part of the joint. And what I'm saying is that that belongs all the way down here. So you see that there's this gap located right here on the front part of the jaw, but then there is nothing. Like this black space here, that's the disc. And you can see it was supposed to be located here. It's getting compressed all the way up against the roof. And I know, okay, you're looking at an MRI and it's a bunch of, all right, yeah, black squiggly lines. I completely understand if you don't see it, that's okay. But looking at this, I'm looking at that saying, you know, all of this is not right. This is a, a pretty classic case where what this person has going on, they've got a structural TMJ or a structural issue. This person needs to work with the right kind of dentist to help resolve this kind of issue because otherwise everything else that, you know, even somebody like myself would be doing is going to be Mickey Mouse. And so I say this, you know, somewhat cheekily, but it's also, you know, coming from a place of genuine care at the same time, is I would love to be that person who could just fix everything and be the last person that a person ever would need for their health care needs. But I know that health is more than just one thing. So if instead you don't need me, but I can be the person to help get you to the right department, I think I've still done a, a pretty good job helping you out. And it's taken me through, again, my own experiences. It's taken me the better part of 10 years to start to learn and to understand what's going on in my own body. And so fortunately, that means I'm a little bit more effective being able to help other people. And so if I can take your own journey to where you would have discovered these same kinds of issues inevitably for yourself, if you can discover them before they start to actually cause a problem or before you really start to have to deal with some of the issues, I'm a happy camper. Now, again, you don't necessarily see all of this stuff, whether it's on an x-ray or a CT scanner or an MRI because of the different angles, but I wanted to bring us back to this position or this picture right here again, because it's such a good, such a good picture to show you what actually is. Your jaw belongs in an open position like this. And when you open, it should move more to the front with a big, nice, even space all the way throughout so that the disc has a place to live. Your jaw should fit towards the front bottom part of that open cavity. It should not be shoved towards the back because if it's shoved towards the back, it's putting compression through that cartilage, which can cause it to pop forward and which can cause pain, muscle problems, and can cause a whole bunch of other balance and even anxiousness kind of problems, weird things that you would think are never associated with your jaw. The question then is, if that's going on, why is that? And that's where it's so useful, again, to look at how you are opening and closing your mouth. If you are deflecting, that is going straight one way, you need to work with the right kind of dentist. If it is going zigzag, there's a neuromuscular issue. You need to work with an upper cervical chiropractor. And if you have a little bit of A and a little bit of B, then you're probably going to need to work with both. And it's important to have the right kinds of people on your team, even with the dentist, even with the chiropractor. You might need to work again with the myofunctional therapist. You might need to work with the massage therapist. You might need to work with the physical therapist all under the same umbrella. TMJ can be very tricky category of disorders, but I hope that in this video, it's given you a little bit more explanation so that you might have a better understanding of what is actually going on. And most importantly, what you can do to help improve your overall quality of life. 
So that's the video that we've got for you right there. Hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have, please always do like and subscribe to the channel and share with friends, family, who you think you need to know this information. That ultimately goes towards helping the YouTube algorithms recognize that this is an important video able to help out other people. And if, of course, you'd like a little bit more personalized information, what we'd have you do is go over to my website, drjeffreyhanna.com, where you're going to find a whole bunch of other videos like this, blog articles, and where you can reach out, get in touch with me. Certainly, if there's anything that I can do to help you out, I will do the very best I can. And if you are in the Spokane, Washington area, then I'd be delighted and honored to be considered part of your, your health team to help you out. I'm at Clear Chiropractic. We've got two offices in North Spokane at Mead and also at the, the South Hill. So look forward to hearing from everybody out there. Again, I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna from Clear Chiropractic. Get well, live well, stay well. Take care and bye-bye.